Hey sunny friends, welcome back to the sunny news. While everyone would love a free holiday, we all know that that's simply not the reality, especially when you're coming to visit a place like London. In today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips of some things you can do for free in London, and then some suggestions of other ways that you can save money when you visit attractions in London. Make sure you watch until the end of the video when I share with you a tip that is simply magical in terms of the ability to save you hundreds of pounds and do something that everybody wants to do when they visit London. Let's start with the free stuff. If it's your first time visiting London, you might not know that most of the museums are free. There's a few attractions that are free you can go to that offer amazing views of London. My favorite one is the Sky Garden. The only catch with that is you do have to book your ticket several weeks in advance according to the time you want to visit. Now, if you go to the Tate Gallery, go to the top floor because it also offers amazing views of London. If you live in London, it would be a lot of help to anyone who views the video if you also added your ideas of free things to do in London. There are quite a few walking tours in London for free. Here's a few examples. To visit places like Westminster Abbey or St. Paul's Cathedral, you'll probably wait in a long queue to get in as well as pay admission. If you plan on attending a formal mass in either of those places, you could see the inside for free. Next are ideas for those who really like to plan ahead and want to commit to days and times for attractions. The catch with this, of course, is if it's not one of the typical beautiful sunny days in London, you might be subjected to going in the rain. The London Eye, if you book your tickets online in advance, you could save up to 10% on your ticket fee. If you're interested in the London Eye and want to experience the South Bank area for a full day, you can also buy a pass that allows you to add several other attractions to it. I did this a few years ago. Okay, so I'm about halfway through my day with Travelex and I started with the London Eye, then I went to Shrek's Adventures, then London Dungeon, and then I went to the Sea Aquarium. Uh, and what I've done right now is I've walked up to Trafalgar Square, one of my favorite places, and next I'm going to hit Regent Street and maybe pick up some souvenirs. One downside I found to this was once I got there, I had to go to each attraction and actually book the time that I was going to come to it. They also offer Madame Tussauds as like a fifth attraction to add to this, but take a look at a map. That's over by Baker Street, which is several tube stops away. And honestly, I don't know how you could do all that in one day, but check out the website because I think you can spread it out over a series of time. The London Pass is perhaps the most popular thing to choose to save money. Mr. Sunny and I recently bought the Vienna Pass when we were in Vienna. It took a lot of research ahead of time and the two days that we had the pass were really exhausting because we're really relaxed travelers. Really look through the list of attractions where you can save money and see how many of them you think you can get to in one day that are near each other. Otherwise, it's not gonna be worth it. An advantage to the London Pass, however, is you are able to skip quite a few of the queues. So that's something to think about if you're just willing to pay for something that might save you time and a little bit of money. On a beautiful sunny day, taking a trip down the Thames on a city cruises boat is a lot of fun. It's a really cheeky way to see a lot of attractions in London, although you don't go inside them. You get to go down the river and you go from Westminster to Greenwich. City Cruises is also part of the London Pass, as is big bus tours. Again, great way to get around London and save money. And the guides on both are really funny. Another combination ticket is buying a ticket on the National Rail and using their two for one options. You want to visit their website because it's a pretty intricate offer, but you want to go to their days out guides and it allows you to get two for one on adult tickets if you use the National Rail. I know this isn't an attraction, but it'll make life easier getting to them. Buy an Oyster card when you come to London, because if you're gonna be on the underground, a daily ticket or buying journey by journey is going to be a colossal waste of money. 
When I first moved to London years ago, there was a half price ticket booth in Leicester Square. I don't think it's called the same thing today, but there is an area in Leicester Square where you can buy deeply discounted theater tickets for shows that are either like that day or the next day. And my final sneaky tip that's really magical is for you Harry Potter fans. Don't forget to subscribe to The Sunny News so you don't miss updates about things to do in London and other sunny destinations around the world. And our final tip for Harry Potter fans, if you would like to save a lot of money on theater tickets to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, a lot of people don't know this. If you go to the website a little bit before one o'clock on a Friday, you can enter to be picked for a random selection called the Friday 40. And that's where they offer 40 tickets to shows the coming week for deeply discounted prices. But you have to be quick because they disappear fast. <laughs>